Welcome to a quick tip video. We are running quick tips. You know what? My camera is not working. Welcome to quick tip videos. We are covering document protection in Microsoft Word today. Document protection is very useful. It can do a variety of things. And right now we're going to go into a document that I have. Uh, this document here is currently, uh, you can edit it, as you can see, I can add my text, and I can also change text. I can move pictures, and I can move them back. So, we're going to protect, and before we protect, we're just going to cover a couple of reasons of why we would want to protect. We'd want to protect a document um, because the information is copyrighted or sensitive to being copied. Um, this can include statistical information, reports, uh, just things that you've spent a lot of time working on, and you don't want this information to be taken from you in whatever method it might be distributed by email or other website or giving people direct uh, direct copies of the document itself. Another reason to protect is sometimes documents can become really big and unwieldy. And sometimes we want to protect the document just because that will actually make it simpler for your audience to use the information because it's there and they can't accidentally shuffle the information around or delete or add. Another reason we would want to protect is to make it easier for a document to be edited. This is especially useful for situations where your document is going to pass through uh, several hands before it lands back up on your lap, uh, and those hands are going to add or change or suggest comments and changes. Um, the way it can be edited is through commented or tracked changes and that's something we'll quickly cover, though we're not going to cover how to do that in this particular quick tip. And one of the last reasons uh, is to allow for a simple form to be easily filled out uh, where there's not going to be any confusion about what exactly is the form and what exactly is the general information. Um, we're going to cover how to add a very simple form function to your document in the second portion of this quick tip. Okay, so those are the general reasons for protecting a document. You might think of a few of your own. To protect a document is actually in and of itself very easy. You simply go to Tools and you go to Protect Document, as you can see here. You click that open and as you see a, a window of new options has become available. Your first option here is Formatted Restrictions and we're not going to cover that. Um, it's not as comprehensive as editing restrictions where there are four options so you click that to enable uh, editing restrictions and you have a drop down men menu here where you can either change it to tr track changes only commented changes only and f or a filling in forms function which is, has a dual function we're going to cover or no changes read only and read only is something you can make it make a document right from uh, the desktop um, <clears throat> okay so track changes are when if you add this prote protection your the changes within your document are only allowed with a track changes function if you don't know what track changes are we're not going to cover that extensively here all we're going to say is that track changes would um, force kind of a red highlighting of changes that were made to your document where where things have been added or removed or moved uh, a mark comes on the side indicating that that has happened and under certain circumstances even the user who has made those changes this is useful if you're going to have if you only have a draft or a very rough uh, um, document and it's going to go through several hands where these people are going to be making changes or adding their own information. Another one is commented uh, changes only, where uh, this might be for a more final document, a, a proposal, for example, or a budget, for example, 
um, where you only want to allow users to suggest changes, not actually be able to make any changes. And those appear as small notes on the side of the document. We're going to skip filling in form function right now. We're going to jump to no changes, read only, which would sound like the most protected form of the document, but it's actually not. No changes allow for the uh, completely lock any actual editing of that particular document. But what it still allows is people can still copy the information and paste it into a new document. Um, so this doesn't protect you from people taking or altering copyrighted information um, as all they have to do is cop select it, copy it, and paste it in a new document. Now back to filling in forms though. Filling in forms allows for the entire document to be locked except form functions. Again, we're covering form functions in part two of this quick tips video. Additionally, form Filling in forms protection actually disables a user's ability to select information and copy it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the filling in forms function here. And while we have no forms, we can still use it. The third option right here is saying start enforcing now. You don't want to start enforcing until you're done your document because once you start enforcing, even you as the author are going to be unable to make changes. So we're going to start enforcing on this particular document. As you can see, a new screen has popped up, start enforcing protection, and we're going to use the password option. Um, sometimes the user authentication option is open, and what that means is you can designate on a network what users on that network are able to change, make changes. Um, this can be cumbersome. I suggest always sticking with the password only option. Now here we have, it says enter a password. So I'm going to, I'm not going to tell you what it is, my secret word. And here we confirm that it's in. We say OK. And all that closes down. And just for more room, we're going to close that portion of the screen and move this aside. And as you can see here, um, I'm clicking uh, as we speak, and I've right-clicked on the picture, uh, which is our logo, and I can't even copy it. As you can see, that's all disabled. And you, you don't know this, but I'm trying right now to drag and select all this text, and I can't, as you can see. No, uh, no method of highlighting works. Uh, including going under the edit menu, you can see copy, select all, are all disabled. So this information is truly protected. Um, however, as you can see, uh, people can still read it, no problem. Um, additionally, if you resave it, say that you have this emailed or you've posted it on the website, if a user simply takes it and renames it um, and saves it, I'll quickly demonstrate that that, in fact, have, hasn't changed the protection level of the document. It's still completely protected. So I'm sure you can think of situations where that is particularly useful to us. Some people might think that a PDF has this function, but it doesn't. Uh, PDFs can also be copied in the same way read-only documents can be copied. So, so far as I have seen, this is the best way to actually protect information you have within a document. Um, okay, so that's the end of our particular, this particular tutorial. Part two does deal with adding simple form functions to a document. <clears throat> Thank you for your time, and bye-bye.